Hi, good afternoon. Uh, actually, I feel stressful. The reasons for me to feel the stress is because I just look at the schedule. I happens to be squeezed in between two very good speakers. So the first one is Prof Echo. Then later on, you will see another one, uh, Walid. So Walid is our, uh, our best teacher. So he got his best teacher awards from school, from college, and all the way up, right? So you can see how good speaker he is. So in order for me to make sure that you pay attention to my speech, uh, I think all the quiz questions actually come from my sections. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, it also happens that uh, this is on academic matters. So it's not the fun stuff. It's not students' life, right? So it's all about academics. So stressful things, yeah? But bear with me. All right. So now I think when you are in, you're all in already. So the very first questions you would have in mind would be, what have you actually gotten yourself into? So the answer to these questions is actually very simple. You got yourself into a four years program, right? And, but of course, the good thing is it is a direct honor pro program. Now, how many programs we have in Triple S? You name it. So we have four single major programs. So what are the four? So go according to alphabetical order, right? So the sequence is alphabetical order. So the first single program would be economics. The second one? Yes. So should psychology come first or public policy come first? Okay, so we have the psychology program. We have public policy and global affair, and we have sociology. So these are the four single major programs we have. And then after that, we have this very nice interdisciplinary program. Sounds scary. So which one? It's interdisciplinary. It's actually go beyond the school of social sciences. Uh, it is very crazy to do a program like this because they have to get courses from social sciences, they have to do courses under uh, school of physical and mathematical sciences, they have to also go for computer science. So what is this? Economics and data science, right? So that is uh, the first uh, uh, interdisciplinary program we have in Triple S. Then after that, we will have another four major programs, right? Dub double majors. So what are the four? What are the four? First one is economics and economics and economics and psychology, right? The second one we have is economics and public policy. The third one we have is economics and media analytics. And then after that, we get psychology to marry it with media analytics, right? So these are the other four major programs we have. Now, then you probably would ask, so what kind of degree I have? So the degree you have is simple. It's actually Bachelor of Social Sciences, right? With honor. Now, I remember just about one month ago, my FYP students came to me and asked, so, should I actually have a BA or should I have Bachelor of Social Science? So the answer I gave him is do Bachelor of Social Sciences. The name itself sounds nicer, right? Okay, so that is the first thing. <laughs> now, then for economics and data science, slightly different is Bachelor of Science, right? So these are uh, uh, slightly different creature we have in Triple S, okay? Now, then after that, you would ask, what do I need to do to graduate, right? So, because you're in already, so you need to think of how to get out, right? So, in order to see how to get out, all right, so, long list of requirements. You have to fulfill all these six requirements in order to graduate. In order to make sure you can uh, get most information out of this, I will just focus on the first five items. Right. So now let's see what is the first item. So the first requirement is 
you have to obtain total AU required for the completions of the program within a period between the minimum and maximum candidature. So what is the minimum candidature? If you are very willing to overload, which I do not encourage you to do that, you can do it in 3.5 years. But if you want to take your time, you can actually do it up to six years, right? Now, but then that might be too long a time to spend, right, in uh, social sciences. Even though I like social sciences, I like to see you guys, but I think try not to do up to six years, yeah? You have to spend your time uh, better elsewhere. Now, then after that, there is something that you have to be uh, very mindful of. So some of you actually might want to consider taking leave of absence for whatever reasons, right? So leave of absence could be because you want to explore something else, taking a break from study, explore something else. So leave of absence can also apply when you think you want to go for a longer term internships, right? So that is also possible. But be very, very mindful when you take leave of absence because second weeks is always the important weeks for you, right? So why I say second weeks is important, the first reason is if you were to take leave of absence, try to do it within the first two weeks. The reason is because if you do it after the first two weeks, we will charge you full fees. If you were to go under the subsidies, right, then we will consider this as a subsidized semester. So if you do it in week three and start applying, they already impose that on you and that is already considered subsidized uh, semester, right? Now, if you do more than four years, we would also get you to pay full fees instead of the subsidized fees, right? So that is uh, the first things to take notes of. And the second reasons why we say second weeks is important is also because second weeks is your add drop period. So there will be courses that you register and then you attend the courses, you realize that you do not like your professor, not the subjects, but the professor, right? Then you decide to drop it. That is also possible, but in second week. Now, then we probably would ask, what is this AU stand for? AU actually stand for academics units. Now, every time you were to do a program, uh, a course with us, you earn academic units. It's almost like you walk your path, you pick up all these academics units. You have to pick up enough academics units to graduate. So how many academics units we are looking at? We say you basically for most courses you have, right, in NTU, most courses, they have three academics units. Some very advanced courses would have four academic units. Some courses, very few, would have two academic units. So you have to monitor your own study plan, pick up enough academic units. So questions is, how many do you need to pick up? So you need to pick up 125 academic units during the entire course of study. Right? So if you decide to do it in four years, then within that four years, you need to have 125. But for psychology, you have more. You can do up to 128 academic units. So simply means just one more subject more than the others. But all the other uh, double major, you probably need more. Right? Econs and data science students, you have to take even more. You have to take up to 140 academic units to graduate. Yeah. So stressful, huh? <laughs> okay. Now that you know that you must earn up to 125 academic units to graduate, then you probably would ask, what should I read? to earn that academic unit. So now to see your, to see your academic unit requirements, so you have this 125 to 128. Now, look at this, you can actually see you have three main blocks, right? So the first block is what we call major requirements, 60 to 69 academic units. Now, what would be what will be these major requirements? Huh? 
So major requirements, because you say you are economic students, you must have done enough economic subjects to classify yourself as economic students. So you have to do some core courses, you have to do some prescribed elective. So this prescribed elective is what we call MPE, right? So you would have the core to go, you have the MPE to go. So that in total would be around 60 to 69. Now, then after that, if you were to look at the earlier slide, you can actually see there is a second block on ICC. This is something that NTU is very uh, proud of, right? So we are looking into training our students in order to have that essential transferable skill. Other than that, we also hope that you know what are the global challenges. You are not just knowing what you have in economics or psychology or sociology or PPGA. You know more than that, right? So this is uh, the block we have for ICC. All right. Now, then after that, what are the things in the ICC? So communication skill, important, huh? Now, then digital literacy, ethics and civics, and many others. So you can see things like science and technology as well. Now, then after that... So, so uh, I just want to add on to what Vaiman said. Can you go back to the previous slide when you have all those... Uh, no, no, before this. No, before, before. The, the diagram, the diagram, yeah. Okay. So you remember I say that your university life is like a giant buffet, right? So you can think of it that you get your pocket money from your parents. The total is 125 AU, so currency is AUs. And you have to decide how to allocate this 125 AU within all of these different uh, categories. So that's why a university life is very different from your previous uh, study life. Here, you will have a lot of flexibility and you need to be mature enough to decide what you want to take. Okay, so it's almost like uh, choosing what you can afford using 125 AU that you have. So it's really a giant buffet. So you will have to be careful with what you choose, okay? Thank you, thank you, Echo. Yeah, so then we have this ICC. So ICC, every student in NTU do the same types of ICC. Now, then after that, there is another very interesting uh, feature, is what we call internships. Now, these internships is very important. Now, why we say internship is very important, sometimes you know you are going to prepare yourself to the job market. So you might want to go into some internships. Some students, they get into very good internships, they really perform themselves, and then they get themselves converted into full-time students, right? Uh, full-time uh, staff. So for these internships, we have two types. One is a 10 weeks internships, five academics units. Another one is a 24 weeks internships. So you probably then would ask, so where do I find time to do these internships? So to do these internships, we strongly advise you to do, if the, it is a short one, so you do it at the end of your year two, SAM two. So between you going from year two to year three, that period, you pick it up as your uh, short-term internships. You can also do it at the end of your year three. So between year three to year four. So you can do another internships. But some students will say, I do not want to separate it like that. I don't want to do it end of year two and then end of year three. Let's do it together, one stretch. So you can do that. If you choose to do that, then you can go for 24 weeks of internships. So then, even for that, we will advise you to do it during your year three. Okay? So don't do intern in year two. Huh? So you do intern in year two, people will say, oh, I'm just finding cheap labor, right? So year three, you are more like a mature adult already, right? So do it in year three, SAM 1, or year three, SAM 2. Now, then you probably would ask, how can I find internships? 
So some students, they go and find internships themselves. Then some, they actually turn to the CAO to ask for help, right? So go to our CAO office. They are very helpful, right? So get their help to uh, identify internship for you. Now, then the last part is probably the most flexible part is the BDE, right? So BDE, you have 30 academics units. If you choose the course of three AU, that means you have 10 courses to go. You have so many to choose from, right? Most flexible. You can actually do it as overseas entrepreneurship program as well. You can take some NTU approved MOOC. And I tell you, students like it. They go to Coursera, identify courses that they love to study. So long as this is approved by NTU, you can do it during your free time, right? So you register the course with some deadline, of course, uh, to monitor, but you can actually do some NTU approved MOOC. You can also use it for your second major. So let's suppose after you've done psychology, you feel that that's not good enough you want to do a second major, then make use of your BDE. You can also do a minor. Now, let me give you a personal example. My niece was a student of NTU from economics program. So when she joined in, now for the fact that I get my niece to come in, that means I have total faith in triple S, right? Okay, so she came in, then I just ask her, she every time come to me and ask me, what should I do with my BDE? I say, just do whatever you like, right? So that is the only advice I gave her. So do whatever you like, all right, with your BDE. Now, your BDE also gives you the flexibility to go for overseas exchange. Now, what we have for overseas exchange, okay, so that is a useful website to look at, right? So if you want to uh, look out for exchange now but be very mindful that when you choose your overseas exchange courses right all the core courses and the ICC courses they are must to stay here so you cannot do ICC course elsewhere right you can only do it here your core you can only do it here so you use your BDE to uh, do up some overseas exchange courses you can also do it with your MPE, right? But not many, huh? So you only have a maximum of three courses uh, during exchange, right? So maximum of... Um okay, thank you. Okay, so then if you want... Let's say after you do psychology, you want to do some second major. So you have long list of second major. But in order for you to do second major, we have a requirement. Because we do not want you to be too stressful, right? So your first year is important. In your first year, you must have your CGPA of four so that you can register for second major. Okay, so these are all the nice programs. Now, but for second major, keep in mind, uh, you have to do up to 11 courses. Very, very heavy, right? So if you do not want to do a second major, then do a minor. So minor only needs you to do in, uh, in that specific field up to five courses, right? So you have up to five courses, you can get your minor. Now, again, long list of minor, not just with triple S, also with SOH, School of Humanity and Social Science, with Wikimi School of Communications and Information, also with Art, Design and Media. So you can choose some of this. Or you can do some interdisciplinary minor offered by uh, uh, H-A-S-S, -S, right? Now, don't, don't worry now, right? So be happy. All these information will be made available to you later on. It's also available on our website, yeah? Now, so, so many choices. Then how should I choose? 
Now, to see how you choose, this is the times where we say you, your life has changed from JC, Poly to university. University, you have a lot of freedoms. You decide many things on your own, including your cost planning. You plan your cost, all right? Now, but of course, you have to plan it wisely, yeah? Don't anyhow plan, okay? Plan it wisely. Now, so let's see, uh, let me give you example. By the way, I am also from economics. So I would actually look at economics as example. Now, why I use economics as example is not like I really love economics so much. It's just because this is the one that I'm more familiar with so that I don't make mistakes, right, giving you advice, yeah? So now, you have all these four years to go. Now, you have SAM 1, SAM 2 every year. What is important is, let me, let me share this with you. These things down here is important. Now, why I say these things down here is important, you look at the numbers. We hardly encourage students to plan anything more than 20 academic units. Too heavy, right? Too heavy, too stressful. Okay? So try to manage it within. 17, 16, I think that probably would be something very nice to have, right? Now, if you hear my advice, then I would suggest this. Usually, if everything turns out fine, perfect, right? But what happens if, let's say, one semester you don't do well? And many students have a tendency, because they want to rush for graduations, they will have a tendency to overload. Now, my personal experience is that don't try to overload, because you will end up having more stress. Yeah? So try to manage it in a way that is manageable. So this is something that is manageable. So now let's take a look at the rate one. So this rate one will be the core. So this core causes Let's say for economics, all the rates are the core courses. So you finish almost all the core courses in your first two years. So why do you need to do that? It's because core courses will be the foundations, right, for you to choose other areas of specializations. Now, this one in yellow, they are the ICC courses. So core courses and ICC courses, we actually pre-plan for you. So First year, not much of freedom. But you can still do some courses here. The blue one will be the MPE. So MPE will be the one that you have a lot of freedom where you want to put it in. And also BDE. So you see, you have so many BDE that you can actually start to actually plan it. Now, but when it comes to year four, SAM 2, if you plan it this way, then SAM 2 can become your honeymoon semester, right? Because you only do your FYP with your lovely supervisor and your favorite group mate, right? So that would be fun time. And you do, let's say, one or two courses, level four courses, maybe, right? So that is how you should actually plan it. So this is where we suggest you to put down your internships, right? So you can put down your internships here, year three, end of SEM two, or you can actually put it here, year two, end of year two, SAM two. Okay, so now for all the BDE, BDE and all the other MPE, you are the one to, to decide, right? You are the one to decide what courses you want to do as your prescribed elective. Now, then you have to do the registrations yourself. Now, where do you do your registrations? You do it in stars and your seniors will tell you that this is star wars so but i do not want to share more because i never experienced that but let your seniors share with you right they will have all kind of tricks so force them to share with you right okay so that is uh, how you do your course registrations first year you don't really have to worry much yeah now so after you are now done with your course registrations you got to ask my assessment, very important thing, huh? So assessment, 
you would have different types. So some professor come to you, oh, this course is examinable. Then some will come to you and say, oh, my course is non-examinable. So what is the difference, main difference between examinable and non-examinable? One got exam, one got no exam, lah, right? Okay, so the one got exam will be the one that is slightly stressful. You will be put in a very big hall, very cold air con, right? So they really maximize the air con. So very cold environment, frightening with all kinds of stress. And then everyone look very serious around you. Okay, so that is the examinable course. So end of the semester, right? So you will see that. Now, what would be the non-examinable course? So non-examinable course, they are more humane, right? So why? Because we test you along the way, right? So I, I do not know whether seniors will like it. They will say, even for the non-examinable one, you will have deadlines and deadlines and deadlines to meet, right? But the good thing is that there's no exam, right? But even, if, even though they have no exam, Many instructors, they will still come back and say, oh, take final test, right? So that is almost the same, but in a better setup. So maybe in an environment like that, you do your final test, okay? All right, now, then this one is important. So academics integrity, you can see the two guys actually got caught. So one actually got into serious theft. The other one actually got caught because of plagiarisms, right? So that's why we say this act of academic dishonesty is something that we cannot tolerate, okay? Now, so what do we mean by plagiarisms? Huh? So plagiarisms in the past is simple. In the past, it's like you see other people work, you copy, that is plagiarisms. Now, plagiarisms is more than that. If you get AI to do your work for you, that is plagiarism, right? Yeah. So be very mindful when you use AI. Now, then after that, the practice you have in school time now cannot. So in school times, what do we do? Huh? Oh, got assignment. Huh? You just lend me your assignment. I copy, then I submit. Now, in university, don't do that, okay? Do your own assignment. That is important. And you do not lend your assignment to your friends. So by not showing your assignments to your friends, your answer to your friends, doesn't mean that you are a bad guy because university say you cannot do that, all right? Don't show your answer to anyone, all right? Now, then after that, this one is more serious one, cheating in exam. That one, definitely not acceptable. They give zero or they fail students or they will just kick students out, okay? So uh, 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 don't do that. Now, then this is nice. This is how you see your performance, right? So you can start to look at all the A plus, A, A minus. Now, your, when we do the grading for you, your instructor or the faculty members know your marks, but they will not tell you your marks. When you, you have your results, your results you obtain, you actually obtain it in grade. So in other words, they can tell you, oh, okay, for principle of economics or microeconomics, you get an A, then you know the attached GPA, grade point is five, right? So you only have letter grades, right? So if you fail, of course, you got no grade point. Ah. Now, then you probably would ask, what would this grade point end up to be? Ah? Okay. So, well, I, okay. I have a little advice here on this, on this uh, GPA here. So you notice, right, the scale is from zero to five. So if you get 4.5 and above, you will graduate with uh, distinctions, right? Uh, so that's something that everyone wants, right? Now, I, I want to ask you something. Uh, where, why do we have this threshold, 4.5, 4, 3.5, and so on? Is it coming out of the blue? Is it based on uh, complex uh, calculation? I think, I think non, none of those. This is just a convention. But think about it. Suppose that there are two students, they are all alike, one has a GPA of 4.51, meaning already at the distinction, and the other one is at 4.49. So which student is smarter? 
I would say none of, both of them are equally smart. But think about their motivation to study harder. Which student will have a higher motivation to work harder? 4.51 or 4.49? 4.49 because you are still below that reference point. You will always feel like you are in the lost situations. You need to go there. If you already have 4.51, you are happy. You are already there. Okay? So, a word of advice. If you get your CGPA just slightly below the cutoff, not to worry, that should motivate you to work harder. Okay, trust me, that's based on behavioral economics uh, research. So, based on this advice, then for all our year three, or uh, year four SAM1 students, we will make sure they just get G CGPA of 4.49, so that they work very hard for one more semester, right? Okay, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah? All right. oh, so everyone will work harder, right? Okay, yeah. So 4.49. <laughs> okay, so it is because of that great point that classify you into different degree classifications. So now we say when you go to the job market, it is a way for you to actually signal to your employers because you have different informations. You know the types of persons you are, whether you are hardworking, whether you are smart, so you have the informations. But your employers actually does not have the informations, right? So the great point become a signal, right? So you are sending out signal, telling them that, okay, I belong to highest distinctions or I belong to distinctions. I have one student, he was already at the highest distinctions, my FYP students. So one day he came to me, he said, then I say, just work a little harder to make sure that you really secure your highest distinctions. Then he asked me, so why do I need to do that? Then I say, that is the way you send out signal. Then this guy later, he worked very hard, but of course, we still need work-life balance, yeah? right? So don't stress yourself too much. All right. Now, then this is the times where we become very cruel to our students. If you have your CGPA, that's four between two, or we say below two, right? So below two. Then how cruel we are. So you're really stressed with your great point. Then we say not enough send you first warning letter, right? Then after that, still fall below two, send you second warning letter. Then after that, still below, then we say send you third one and kick you out from school. All right, so that is uh, something stressful, huh? but uh, try to monitor that. Uh. Okay, so very tough, huh? Right, so let's look for some discount. So what are the discount? So we give you exemptions. So we know you are Freshmen, right? So freshmen got discount. Yeah? So what uh, discount we give? We give you up to uh, six letter grades courses that you do not make the past grades on the first attempt in the freshman year will be excluded from your GPA calculations. So that only applies to first year. Now, but then... You know why? Because uh, this is during the honeymoon period, right? You, know, you are still new, right? So we... <laughs> The honeymoon period, but after that, it's over and then it becomes uh, tougher. Yeah, so life becomes stressful second year onwards, yeah? All right, then if you keep doing the subjects, so let's say I do macro principle, I feel the first time. So we say, okay, we exclude that from calculations. But you do second attempt, still fail. Then we say, no, it will be reflected, right? Now, then... Grades of all attempts will be reflected in the transcript, even though we don't use it to calculate your GPA. Now then, the second discount we give it to you will be all these SU options. So you take some of the BDE because you like to do yoga, so you go and take up a course in yoga, but then you realize that you do not have that flexibility and you're going to fill that course, right? Then that is the time you use the SU options. S stands for satisfied, U stands for not satisfied, right? Okay, so this applies to the BDE courses, but the maximum quota will be up to 12 academic units, right? 
So the reasons why we want to give you these SU options is we want you to be more adventurous, right? Take up courses that beyond your comfort zone, right? So explore more. And if you can do well, you think you can do well, then you just get the grades. But if you think that it is too stressful, then you can choose to SU that course. So you still have many questions, but we do not have the time. So what we have done is uh, my very nice undergraduates team here have helped you to prepare the Social Sciences, School of Social Sciences Undergraduate Students Handbook. So we make that available to you, right? Now, then this one also is important when you receive email from your NTU email account, be mindful on the emails sent by undergraduate office. So we always send meaningful emails to you, all right? So we will not send scam, right? So yeah, be mindful of all those emails. Huh? Now, this one I need to emphasize again. So we actually do survey based on students' experience. So we probably will ask students, okay, share your experience, tell us how you feel. And one of the items that students always criticize us is that they will tell us that they have nobody to turn to in NTU. The answer is no, that's not the case, right? So we always have a mentor for you, right? So each of you have a mentor. Now, so what would be these mentor-mentee relationships? Huh? So one way for you, your professor to remember you better is to disturb them, right? So you disturb them enough, they will remember you, right? So go see your mentor. Just knock and say hi, right? So like Professor Walid is well liked by his students, right? <laughs> so he is very welcoming. Now, one thing I assured you are, uh, all our faculty from School of Social Sciences, they are very helpful to their students. So go see them, right? Ask for academic advice. Share your boyfriend-girlfriend relationship with them. Oh, no, lah, they don't listen to you, all right? But uh, those are the... Uh, just go see them, okay? Now, then here, I want to introduce to you my UG team, so undergraduates educations team, right? I hope that you guys get to see them in person because we do a lot of correspondence through email, but we do not see the persons. You do not know how hard these people are behind the scene. So let me introduce my team to you. So the first one, I have my manager, uh, Miss Ng Yanjia, right? So Miss Ng Yanjia is the manager from our UG team. She is also in charge of psychology, right? Then the second person who is so important to the UG team is Miss Tina, okay? So Miss Tina is in charge of economics, economics and data science, public policy and global affairs, all right? So, then I need to look out for my sociology manager. Where's my sociology manager? Oh, okay. So you see, they are, they, they are helping you to do the setup at the other room, okay? So Mr. Samson is the manager for uh, sociology. So these are the people whom you can also disturb them, right? So you can write them emails. So even though we have all these emails, we call the role-based email, but you know that there are people behind the scenes, right? So I have my managers and my staff who are very supportive there to actually help you. All right, so thank you very much and I hope you have a good journey in NTU. Thank you.